Hello. Very good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all of you at the round table discussion. It's a leadership talk session. I am Soumya Chaudhary and I'm happy to greet all of you on behalf of Aragon Media. Aragon Media Group is hosting its biggest new normal education leadership summit today in Ahmedabad. We had a wonderful inauguration session at the above and I hope you all have enjoyed our summit till now. Now we'll have a roundtable discussion over here, where we have invited all our respected, respected educators from universities and institutes from Gujarat. We are very thankful that you have accepted our invites and agreed to be a part of this summit. Thank you so much. The topic for the discussion will be transforming teaching and learning with unleashed potential of tech enabled solution. And this session will be moderated by Dr. Prem Das Maheshwari, Director, South Asia D2L Corporation. Sir, handing over the mic to you, please take the discussion forward. Thank you, Samya. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you and uh, thanks for attending this uh, roundtable uh, you know, uh, summit. And uh, I'm so pleased, uh, this is our first foray into Gujarat and having full house, not even uh, one absentee is fantastic. And I think your views for one of the most advanced state uh, in the technology area. I think that would be fantastic to listen to all of you uh, on this topic. So just to give a brief introduction uh, about uh, uh, D2L, I am uh, taking care of South Asia business for D2L, formerly called as Desire to Learn. We are a Canada headquartered company in the area of learning management systems and learning management platforms, which are SaaS based and cloud based LMSs. Uh, we are global leaders, uh, we have presence all across the continents. In India, we, we, have, uh, uh, we are now four years old in India with 70 plus clients including the entire Manipal group, uh, SRM, IIT, Laksha, Wits, there's a whole laundry list of institution who have adopted this learning management platform essentially and ideally to ensure technology enabled education. Now the idea of today's discussion, uh, as Swamya mentioned, is transforming teaching and learning with unleashing the potential for tech enabled solution. Now, post COVID, we all are pushed into adopting technology solutions. During COVID, we were made to actually do teaching and learning, change the pedagogy and start teaching and learning completely using digital solutions. Even till today, we find that majority of institutions have not either fully understood uh, the, the advanced technologies or think that, that using Zoom and uh, maybe Microsoft or uh, Google Classrooms is this learning management systems, which is not. And there are a lot of challenges because these students who were perhaps born in the early 20s or, uh, or you know, 2000s, they are all born amidst technology. They are much smarter than all of us. They know how to use technology, they love uh, video games, they love mobile-based apps and games. <coughs> technology is all around them. And therefore, uh, for us as educators, as, as people at the helm of the, the you know, affairs at most of the institutions, managing the institutions as also faculties, as also students, it is a major challenge for us to match their pace and velocity, which means that but not besides uh, you know, them being tech enabled, ourselves have to be tech enabled. Our faculties need to be fully equipped with the latest technology which is in vogue. Because to, to make them understand what we are teaching, it's important and critical for us that we also understand what is technology enabled education, how pedagogies are changing around us and around the world because it's a small world now. We are all interconnected, intertwined with institutions overseas and vice versa. And therefore, we also need to maintain that pace. So there are certain challenges that I found out, which I'll, I'll, I'll enumerate. And we have identified some four or five topics that we will discuss, we'll go down the table. And uh, you, you would like to pick any of the topics that you feel in your view and uh, at your institution, you feel that this is one of the most important challenges or maybe an advantage that in your experience could be shared with the rest of 
leaders here, so that we can benefit from each other and understand how you in your own capability and capacity in your respective institutions are actually facilitating this adoption of new age technology. So the areas that uh, you know initially and uh, you know uh, I have identified is number one of the challenges that I find in most of the education institutions I've been meeting a lot of my chancellors and chancellors of Indian institutions is empowering the educators. Empowering the educators would mean that we are all amid technology, we all understand, we all know that technology is so important, but have we taken efforts to empower, enable our faculties and teachers? Perhaps there, there is one area where I find that we are not that serious. The teachers and faculties are not empowered or enabled to start using technology. I think that is one of the challenges that they won't be able to deliver the new age pedagogies, uh, therefore. So that's one area. The second area is uh, that we're talking about personalized learning experiences. The way uh, you know Domino's uh, talks about personalized pizza. So you decide space remains the same, and you decide what topics you need. Similarly, the expectation of most of these students today is personalized education. So if I have certain capabilities in certain areas, I would expect my institutions and faculties to deliver those specific capabilities or areas of interest that I am uh, good at or I am weak at. So today, technology-enabled education is more become personalized education, which means that you could actually identify personalized tracks and then use technology to impart those personalized tracks. The other area is, uh, is access to information. So we have broken geographical barriers. So if you feel that in certain areas or certain uh, you know, subjects or certain domains, we have more or better international uh, you know, capabilities or international faculties or, or subject matter experts who could be intertwined into delivery of our education modules. I think technology is, is permanently used by most of the institutions to break those barriers and also provide the expertise of our own teachers and faculties to international students. So I think that, that is one area where we are growing very fast and also accepting the subject matter expertise of international faculties. The third area is, uh, of course, how do we create interactive and engaging content? Today, uh, I think all of you will agree that the students' attention span has reduced considerably, vis-a-vis -vis when we all used to be in the, the classrooms. And that is the main reason that we now need to work on creating very much engaging and interactive content. So that we're able to, to actually grab that attention span of those students who are learning with us. And how do we then create interactive and engaging content using technology? And one of the areas that uh, you know we as learning management platform has worked on is, is to ensure that we have immense amount of gamification in the process of delivering education. So students, you know, today they love uh, you know games to be played on, on mobile phones and internet. And they love to cross one level, go to the other, and, and go to the, the other level. So what we have done is we have linked crossing each level with some awards and, uh, and uh, you know award tools. So if you cross certain level of education, you go to the next level, you get awarded some uh, e certificates or e tools, and then you go to the next level. So if I've created, I've cleared the basic level of a particular module or subject, I'm motivated to go to the other level and do more complex study of that subject or topic and get awarded. The benefit is that when student community talks to each other, somebody would say that, oh, I have crossed level three in a particular subject or a particular area. What about you, which level are you at? That creates a competitive spirit amongst these students and motivates them to go to the next level and be part of gamification too. That's one area where I find that we need to create more interactive and engaging content within our, within our institutions. The next area is uh, you know, data-driven decision making. So, I think all the leaders, we, we constantly need to take uh, data-driven decisions today because data is now available. And digitized data help you not only to actually see how each and every student is moving in their own courses, and also part of new education policy and 2020 desires that we actually impart competency-based education where we are able to identify <coughs> competency attainment of each and every student within a group. So, when they started, they were at zero or five level of competency, and when they passed out, they were able to attain 80% or 85% of that course competency. And talking about outcome-based education, 
how do we ensure that we use the data available to us and using technological tools and AI based and ML based tools, we are able to identify not only at risk students, which means that additional amount of uh, content needs to be delivered to them, also understand who are good students or mediocre students and what strategies as educators we need to adopt to cater to the requirements of each and every uh, you know, stat strata of students. That's another area uh, you know, we're talking about. We're also talking about remote and hybrid learning. So today, uh, I'll give you an example of one of our clients, uh, which is an engineering college down south called VIT. What they're doing is that they have converted 40% of their regular routine engineering course into an online version. Now students are given access to online learning management system and they can do that 40% of standard static content themselves in a one year time. Which means all, all the recorded lectures and every content about that 40% routine uh, subjects is available online and they can do it at their own pace. Even give examinations online and clear those modules. So that when they come to the classrooms, it is more to study the application of that ready-made content which is available online to them and people discuss, teachers and faculties discuss project cases, questions and, and uh, you know, quizzes in the classroom rather than discussing the static content that is already made available to the students. So all such kind of uh, you know, hybrid learning models are now developed in most of the institutions. So we need to talk about that also. Another important feature is accessibility and inclusive, uh, inclusivity which means that today we are catering to all sorts of able students. Uh, we also have a lot of students who are visu visually impaired or, or they have some different kinds of uh, you know, capabilities or especially uh, you know, able children. Are we able to provide our pedagogies and education to such kind of students? Yes or no? And we can now today use the immense amount of uh, artificial intelligence like tools to impart education to differently able uh, you know, uh, children. That is also one of the areas which government is also focusing on. Also as we, uh, we as educators also need to consider that. But the idea is to discuss uh, the present and future of education keeping in view all these challenges and make them as our assets to ensure that we are able to deliver the uh, right kind of education. So what I have done is that uh, the, uh, in the WhatsApp group, uh, I had uh, you know, uh, talked about five areas and what we will do is we will go around the table uh, and you could choose any one of uh, the, you know, those areas. We have around one hour, 45 minutes with us, uh, post which we will have lunch outside and then we go to the main hall. So I think the idea is pick any one of those five areas uh, about uh, what I discussed just now. And you may have had some uh, good experience about technology or maybe a challenge that you face. Let's discuss, let's pick uh, your specific experience so that all of us can benefit through your experience. That's the whole idea of this uh, round table. So shall we start? Uh, maybe we can start with you, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. and. Uh, the thought process uh, of uh, setting up this agenda is uh, nicely curated. I must congratulate you, sir. Uh, I would like to share my experience uh, when I visited, uh, you know, UK and had gone to uh, see the British Museum. They are actually using, uh, you know, AI and VR technology for their students. So students can uh, students of history and culture are more interested to visit these museums. So when they go, they are actually allowed to experience how you know this. Uh, historical artifacts and the uh, ancient civilization came into existence. Uh, if you just want to see that how this artifact was actually looking like when it made and you can you know just see it 360 degrees. So that's how you know they are all at once and uh, I am sure that uh, in India we are yet to achieve it and that, that's where I feel technology you know can uh, make a huge difference. I am working with uh, our group of students to, you know, encourage them to make AR and VR application for a tour of the university. So when somebody comes in the university, you know, they, they just need to uh, download the app and they can actually go through the university departments or the laboratories or whatever and it will work for prospective students and the parents probably. That's the one area I feel that, you know, with the use of technology we can uh, do it. 
the second thing is i am as a professor uh, teaching then i always take care of all the students and as you rightly mentioned that there are many students it is a professor who has to identify because people generally doesn't like to reveal all these things in the class especially their deficiencies so i am using microsoft learning shoot which has really uh, great features uh, you know to address all these challenges so text to speech then text preferences so if somebody has a dyslexia you know it it creates a very good content which is only visible and removes the stress of the other things on the screen and uh, you know it also allows you to uh, go through the different features where you know adhd students that is uh, anxiety disorder and the hyper dissective uh, sorry hyper disorder they cannot have an attention so so that's why the content has to be curated in that way and learning shoot is allowing you to create that kind of content which will actually help students uh, in a very engaging way so that's my experience with the technology but uh, yeah lot to achieve in this area thank you thank you so much and you are right i think uh, i was just talking about customized uh, you know education just like pizza and this is this is uh, one of the examples where you could customize uh, uh, the entire delivery and pedagogies as per the needs of the students Uh, I know a couple of international universities who have customized uh, examinations, which means that if I have been found as a mediocre student, uh, I may not be good at attempting a high-level examination. I'm bound to fail. And an uh, easy examination is again not assessment of my capabilities. And therefore, since I'm a mediocre student, they create three levels or four levels of <coughs> examinations, and I'm allocated to that particular examinations or quiz. Which I am, uh, my capabilities are, are can easily be tested by the faculties. So all all sorts of customized assignments, customized assessment tools, and examinations, and all 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 are working towards individualized and personalized education. And what you gave up was a perfect example of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, hello. I'm I'm sorry. I think let's do one thing. Let's go round the table first. and introduce all of us so so that we know who is talking so please sir. yeah i am professor sandeep persant uh, i am the professor of computer science and registrar i have 20 plus years of experience being into academia last 8 years i have ventured into you know coming into administration i have not left teaching so i am still teaching i am guiding students but at the same time i am enjoying the administration of the university as well thank you hello namaskar मैं डॉक्टर ज्योति श्रीवास्तव रजिस्ट्रार साबरमती यूनिवर्सिटी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आप सभी को धन्यवाद बुलाया है मुझे यहाँ पे uh, अभी जो बात हो रही है माहेश्वरी सर ने बहुत अच्छी बात की आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस और उसकी बट एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम में टेक्निक्स कैसे आ सकता है जिसमें स्लो लर्नर्स की बात हो रही है तो जब टेक्निक्स को उनके साथ कैसे जोड़ा जाए वो हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज होता है बिकॉज वो फिजिकली लिखने आते हैं तो हम उनको टाइम देते हैं तो इसमें भी कुछ ऐसा सिस्टम हो कि 24 फोर आवर्स दे कैन एक्सेस तो एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट के साथ अगर डायरेक्ट आकर ये ट्रेनिंग दिया जाए इसके बारे में तो हम लोग ज़्यादा अच्छे से मतलब सहूलियत के साथ और भी एडमिशन्स भी हमको मिलते हैं बिकॉज स्लो लर्नर्स को यूनिवर्सिटीज मना कर देती हैं नॉर्मली तो वो एक मेरे ख्याल से एक मुद्दा है जो उठाया जाना चाहिए कि स्लो लर्नर्स को भी हायर एजुकेशन में मिलना चाहिए और टेक्निक्स उसमें अपना बहुत बड़ा रोल निभा सकता है आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की बहुत अच्छी ये बात सर ने कही है तो वो उनके लिए बिकॉज फैकल्टी आई थिंक 24 फोर आवर्स अवेलेबल नहीं हो सकते हैं तो दे कैन प्ले बिग रोल एंड ऑटिज्म स्कूलिंग में बहुत ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स हो रही है और टीजम बच्चों के लिए तो क्या हम उनको हायर एजुकेशन में ले जा सकते हैं टेक्निक्स के माध्यम से तो अगर इन सब जो नॉर्मल के साथ जो दिव्यांग जिसको हमारे आदरणीय मोदी जी ने नाम दिया है तो उनको कैसे जोड़ा जाए और उनको हायर एजुकेशन तक कैसे ला जाए तो उसमें हमारी टेक्निक कैसे ला सकते हैं जैसे अमेरिका की बात इन्होंने कि फिनलैंड में बहुत अच्छा काम हो रहा है इस पर तो अगर उस सिस्टम को हम अपने देश में ला सकें तो आपके माध्यम से हमारा ये संदेश है कि अगर हम लोग हमारे एजुकेशन सिस्टम में उस चीज को ला दिया जाए तो हम लोगों के लिए बहुत बड़ा अचीवमेंट होगा थैंक यू सर मैंने आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा मैम Uh, मैंने जो ये बात की थी लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम की जो कंपनी जिसमें मैं काम करता हूँ टी टू एल लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम है इसके अंदर क्या किया है हम लोग इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स फॉलो करते हैं दिव्यांगों के लिए अब दिव्यांग 
या तो हेयरिंग इम्पेयर हो सकते हैं या लिस्निंग अगर कोई हो सकती है डिफिकल्टीज या कोई फिजिकल डिसेबिलिटी हो सकती है तो अब जो जो टीचिंग और लर्निंग पैडोलॉजीज बन रही हैं उसमें ये सब चीज़ों का ख्याल रखा गया है तो डिपेंडिंग ऑन किस तरह की डिसेबिलिटी उस स्टूडेंट में है या कुछ अगर उनको एक बेसिक लेवल की एजुकेशन देनी है या वो और उसे कोप नहीं कर पा रहे हैं बिकॉज उनको कुछ मानसिक ही कोई समस्या हो सकती है सबके लिए इसके अंदर प्रावधान दिया हुआ है तो उसमें क्या करते हैं आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस टूल्स ऑलरेडी इनबिल्ट हैं उनको बता दिया जाता है कि ये सेट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स या ये स्टूडेंट इस पर्टिकुलर डिसेबिलिटी से जूझ रहा है और उसको जो पेस ऑफ लर्निंग और बच्चों के बराबर नहीं हो सकती वो स्लो लर्नर होगा क्योंकि उसकी ये डिसेबिलिटी है तो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस लेट टूल्स होते हैं उसके लिए एक तो चीज़ें आसान बना देते हैं अगर हेयरिंग इम्पेयर है तो उसको विजुअल तरीके से उसको एजुकेशन दी जाती है हेयरिंग इम्पेयर है तो विजुअल्स का कुछ उसके अंदर सिस्टम है जिसके अंदर उसको डिफरेंट तरीके से डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स को स्लो तरीके से पढ़ाया जा सकता है तो टेक्नोलॉजी और आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की सब सुविधा दे रखी है ऑलरेडी दे रखी है और इसीलिए इंटरनेशनली तो जितने भी हमारे करीब पंद्रह सौ यूनिवर्सिटीज़ हैं जो क्लाइंट्स हैं वो ये यूज़ कर रहे हैं और वहाँ पर सब बच्चे एक तरीके से ट्रीट किए जाते हैं और ये फीचर्स को उनके लिए अवेलेबल कर दिया जाता है हमारे यहाँ पर अभी क्या है कि हमारे यहाँ आई थिंक ज़्यादातर यूनिवर्सिटी जैसे बच्चों को एडमिशन ही दे पाती हैं नहीं देती हैं या पसंद नहीं करती हैं आगे से चूँकि ये फीचर्स और आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस लेट टूल्स अवेलेबल होने वाले हो चुके हैं तो अब हम ऐसे बच्चों को भी एक सिस्टम में ला सकते हैं उनको एजुकेशन दी जा सकती है तो डिफरेंट कलर के फॉन्ट साइजेस कलर्स जो उनको दिखें या वो समझ सके वो सब फीचर्स ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल हैं हम लोग जब डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन करते हैं किसी यूनिवर्सिटी को ये सब टेक्नोलॉजिकल फीचर्स का तो एक ये पार्ट का भी डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन करते हैं कि कैसे ऐसे बच्चों को भी हम पढ़ा सकते हैं या उनको भी एजुकेट कर सकते हैं बाकी तो ये फीचर्स ऑलरेडी हैं केवल ये है कि हमें एक बार आपको सबको दिखाना है बताना है कि ये फीचर्स अवेलेबल है लेट्स टू दैट थैंक यू सर सब लोग प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट के अपने इंट्रोडक्शन दे दीजिएगा उसके बाद देने यस गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू डॉक्टर पीचल जवेरी डीन फैकल्टी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज आई हैव बीन एसोसिएटेड विद पारोल यूनिवर्सिटी सिंस लास्ट नाइनटीन ईयर्स एंड वर्किंग एज अ डीन फैकल्टी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वेर डीलिंग विथ अ डाइवर्स एरिया ऑफ स्पेशलाइजेशन सब्जेक्ट अंडर द मैनेजमेंट प्रोग्राम्स आई ऑलमोस्ट Fifteen years back, completed PhD in area of online marketing, and never thought about that what would be the future of uh, digitalization. And I now uh, we can say that the digital technology has created a great impact for the transformational learning. So one thing uh, before starting, I would like to share that uh, now we are having a two dots. One is learning, and one is technology. What is the shortest distance between two dots? I would say that when you bend the rules, change the rules. so here i would say that if we are talking about the today's learning education system uh days are gone where we can learn to the students in a four uh, four walls of classrooms instead of interact in, instead of instruction based learning here the more uh, education system need to be adopt like immersive based learning virtual reality based learning because that is the need of today's era we cannot just instruct the students that you have to do like this but we here the role of teacher is not just just only teacher but he is he or she is a coach for the entire group of students and where we provide the personalized learning system to the students that will give a more beneficials to the learning system the second thing if we are talking about the learning environment instead of creating learning environment we can create the learning achievement environment and as sir initially discuss about the so many gamification technique at uh, gamification technique where you can encourage students for the rewards and badge uh, badge and uh, appreciation appreciation system that will give much more uh, customers learning in a more pleasant way here the how you make your customer that is our students learning engagement should be pleasant if it is not pleasant because we we see that 24 by 7 they are the uh, uh, netizen users from small box to the big box they 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 are having impatience uh, nature and that is the reason that so many technological usage has been created like chat box mentoring system mobile mentoring system that is required for today's generation because they cannot wait for a half an ha, ha, half minute if we don't reply for to them they are having a impatience nature so how we can resolve out that queries and i have seen that so many mobile mentoring system can play a important role when we are talking about that low pace learners those who are the very active learners we should 
as a as a uh, teachers we need to identify that which type of programs are required to deliver them and the last point that i would like to discuss over here about the most important thing that is a communities when we talk about the communities and we live in the digital era so virtual communities plays a very important role that how you share connect uh, uh, share the experience of knowledge system and provide the best learning to the students so these are the three areas where we can say that learning share and change the entire educational system that is the most important thing the last point i would like to discuss over here about that tech based uh, solution as uh, for as here also we teach uh, ug students or pg students when students enter in any education in any uh, professional industry i think few of the example like i would say that uh this word by parker or titan plus or uh, that uh, toyota they they provided the customized solution to the customers so we need to teach our students that when they enter into such digital era they should be aware with all such type of technology how they can use vr ar concept for the customer please pleasant digital journey so just i would like to summarize over here and uh, apart from that so many areas where we can uh, provide the learning concepts to the students by swam study of web activities by learning aspiring young minds swam courses are there mooc courses are there lms system is there so usage of all this system will provide the more active learning to the students so these are the certain views thank you thank you, thank you so much i think for what you spoke is absolutely right and relevant uh you yeah, and you're also right that we need to engage students students are are they have very little uh, attention is fine some of the universities and one of the universities in india is also using that what they're doing is they're giving you, you give assignments and projects to students what they're doing is using our platform they're giving you a mobile assignment what teacher does is he or she records an assignment on on a selfie mode uh, onto your uh, mobile system it gets disseminated to all these students through learning management so students also solve that assignment which is a case study or a problem and they record their answer on the mobile and post it teachers views uh, all those videos of all these students and they 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 grade them students are so thrilled because they are using technology uh, what they use you talked about community student community is again a very very interesting way uh, to actually make students learn so we have uh, you know a facility on learning management system called threads so discussion threads so what happens is a teacher creates some some student communities it could be a combination of uh, bright mediocre and slow learners also but it could be communities of uh, three different levels and they start a discussion thread the way we have discussions on whatsapp groups the one is saying something the other one is answering to that discussion and so on and so forth they create the learning communities on the system i was part of uh, you know one of the discussions sometime back i was going through a course in uh, uh, boss subordinate management as part of a management uh, course a learning management course what teacher said that okay you all of us have read a lot of uh, stuff on the internet as also in our uh, management programs about boss subordinate relationships let's do a different thing he opened a thread of discussion says he says can every one of you describe three of your best bosses and three of your worst bosses in your career or two or, or one whatever is a, a number of years of experience and why why do you consider them consider them as best bosses and why do you consider them uh, them as best uh, and worst bosses everyone started writing about their own experiences somebody said that my this particular boss was a very hard task master and that's why i consider him as a worst boss the other one you know, would say he was doing good job he was doing best for his company why would you treat him like that and discussion started it was a group close group of 20 people at the end of that discussion the moderator of the faculty came out with 27 different boss subordinate, subordinate styles based on that discussion which otherwise is not available in any document any uh, book or any other uh, material on, on the internet that's the way now learning is happening it's more of experiential learning rather than strict uh, learning by syllabi so i think fantastic ideas ma'am thank you so much sir uh good afternoon everyone uh, my name is virendra singh nagore i am uh, a teacher as well i teach uh, biotechnology and uh, control of examination at the university of hyderabad uh, i have been in teaching from last 12 years and in administration i moved like around 3 years back and yes i would like to start with the challenge that this particular designation is causing me like control of examination 
what is happening we talk a lot about uh, transformation in education in terms of slow learner fast learner and we are also talking about the uh, various uh, reforms are happening because like we are embracing the nep but uh, i think it is not completely percolating to the student level what is happening like nep has given us a lot of opportunities to explore in terms of not only uh, the lecture delivery but assessment also but uh, i think like everybody is there uh, from academic fraternity but whether we are able to use the various tools that are available why we are only sticking to the, the paper based method the only golden thumb rule to give the mark why not we can include some more content to it and then again uh, these things are not getting passed through your acs or pogs because they are not willing to listen to this sometimes private players tend to do this then again uh, you have certain agencies which then question your intention like you are doing it but uh, why you are doing it other players are not doing this so that is i think one of the area where uh, we need to take collectively as an uh, university we need to think about like how we can transform the examination like maybe some students who are very good learner we categorize students in terms of uh, fast learner slow learner but then again we restrict them an opportunity we just uh, fix them like with before completion of this semester you cannot move to the next semester or you would not get an opportunity to even read those content right so there something need to be done so that they can be uh, made well aware of what lies next in terms of content again uh, like you started with uh, one of the very key agenda which is very close to me is like empowering educators <laughs> and i believe before empowering educator uh, comes one more point that is embracing changes whether our educators are ready to accept it what happens sometime um, you find if you are having a 10 member team who are quite eager to implement anything anything new comes they are like uh, this is new this must be done but again you will find some people uh, like who are not ready to even listen to those ideas so uh, how we are going to address that because we are not targeting anywhere or we are not uh, categorizing anywhere the educators in terms of slow or fast right. we only say students are slow and fast but what about educators whether educators have gained any skills in last 5 years or not because things have changed the time when i graduated i completed my graduation it was 2009 i completed my pg 2012 and but what skills what subjects and what what level i have studied is not currently available like it's it has gone like anything if you see the publication detail or patent detail of india and compare it before three or pre covid and post covid you will find this change is very high but whether our educators are now accepting so i think one of the key area that i feel like is uh, challenge that our educators need to fulfill first so that they can be a role model to students and second challenge that i really feel is a technical or content divide which is present we cannot shy away from here we all see students coming from different background but the people the students who are coming from very rural area they find it challenging to even operate a computer or any system and then we put them in a direct competition with everybody and then they try to avoid the contact avoid the studies and that's where i think we lose the connect with them so a technical divide is happening and we think that this should be taken into consideration we might have to talk about like integration of schools where uh, universities or colleges can have some session with the schools for only the upliftment of technical development not about uh, branding or anything but a genuine honest leadership to look after the education across india so that's i think i want to convey from this session from my i think very relevant inputs and change management you are right this is very very important in any institution i still remember when we were using nokia phones push button move to the feather touch 
I myself took uh, at least a year to get into that model. Now, change management, as you rightly said, is important and that too at faculty level. And you're right that when it's a group of faculties, there are two or three who are very enthusiastic about adapting that change, but there are also people to pull them down. So change management, I absolutely, absolutely agree that since we have to match the pace of students who are learners, we have to also ensure that faculties are adequately enabled in technological tools management. So what we do uh, normally is that we uh, you know, go to an education institution who adopts a learning management system. We provide them an innumerable, limitless number of trainings to adapt and use technology. And to ensure that they feel that by using technology, they are able to save a lot of time, which otherwise was uh, wasted in routine, mundane, administrative tasks. So preparing a grade, they used to actually fill those Excel sheets, writing names and putting their grades, now this is automated. Uh, creating the content is automated. Taking the examination is automated. When they realize that this is going to make their life easier than difficult, they adapt. It takes a while. Uh, I agree with that, I think. That's I would like to just add uh, one of the examples that uh, uh, I, along with my class, uh, we took together a SWAM course so that uh, I can make them familiar and uh, let them understand that uh, education is not limited. The one of the key areas where we tend to talk about, like our POs are also defined on that, lifelong learning. Like, so I make them understand, see, things have changed. Even I am trying to uh, learn something new. So you also need to remember you are not graduating with a set of knowledge. You are graduating with a set of skills that you need to sharpen every time whenever you are moving up the ladder. So that's how I try to transform my students. And I believe that may be like inspire some people. Also. You're right. I mean, you're actually transforming from the stage of being sage on this stage to guide by the side. So I think that's the way it, the education is happening. The new pedagogy is talking about it. Thank you so much for your contribution. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Sayyad Tariq Ali, Registrar of Karnavati University. I have been associated with institute, this institute since more than 15 years. Today when we talk about <coughs> tech-enabled solutions for transforming you know, learning and education, two important uh, benefits that we can you know, get out of it, which I feel is, one, one of them is personalized learning, you know, wherein you can, with AI, ML, algorithms, you can you know, identify what kind of you know intervention the student is required, and universities across the world are doing it also. Uh, if I give you an example of Georgia University, what they do is they have created a learning analytic analytic software wherein what they do is basically uh, they do analysis of learning management system, academic record, demographics of the student, based on which they try to identify the risk associated with the student of being dropped out or academically challenged. And the algorithm itself suggests, you know, intervention, actions, whether to give counselling, what to do and all those things. So, this is one such stage that, you know, which we can achieve through this AI, ML algorithms and everything. Second is immersive learning, immersion, immersion learning. That's sir rightly quoted about gamification. You can also go for AR, VR, the latest we know that Apple has come with something called Apple Vision Pro where you know you can wear a headset and the world is at your fingertips. So AR, VR, so this way we can make you know your study and get student engagement immersion. But what actually possesses a, possesses a challenge is basically which technology to adopt, whether it will align with your pedagogy or not. You know, because when you decide upon going on with AI ML, but whether I as an institute will be able to implement or not. So that is what poses a main challenge. And here what it comes to, uh, according to me, comes the role of a partnership between, you know, the solution provider and the institute, where, you know, both of us can work together and come to a sort of customized solution because every university will have different kind of needs. When we talk about content creation and uh, different kinds of technology adoption. So if you post a lecture online, it cannot be the same lecture that you are teaching in the classroom. A student will spend one hour going through Instagram Reels but not watch the same lecture that you are giving. You have to be creative when you create that lecture and post it online. So all those things have to be considered. So what I intend to say is basically we have to align 
with best practices pedagogy whatever technology we adopt we it has to align with our university our top our you know our whatever kind of pedagogy we prefer so for example we were never into this engineering at our university we have never introduced engineering why we introduced we wanted to create a synergy between a design institute that we have and uh, btex you know because they are skill based Entire my design institute is skill based. Seventy five percent is learning by doing, and hardly twenty five percent is theory. But then they lack this technical knowledge where that which comes with robotics and all those things. So we try to make our campus integrated. We integrated to we have created a tagline that we want to create an integrated campus. So whenever we, you know, launch a new program or anything, so we try to see the synergies between all other programs. How it will help the other program? It's not out of the blue. We start a program. We try to create synergies. that so that is what and lastly i would like to say that uh, technology this technology adoption should be sustainable whatever the technology we decide to adopt and we want to go we should have that infrastructure available with us which we should have that inclination to go with that so definitely tech enabled solutions are a way to go it will definitely go a long way we all have to adopt it we don't have a choice actually otherwise we will left behind but then it poses specific challenges also that's what i think. Thank you so much. You talked about Georgia University. Yeah. That is using our uh, system, or computers, learning management system, because we focus uh, immense amount of uh, energies on the data analytics, and that actually even uh, takes you to a position you can understand the social behavior of a student. Students form uh, certain, uh, you know, their own groups, and they discuss a lot of things besides the studies. How they are socially active or inactive, all that is affected by using AI. This is one. You also talked about. Uh, Uh, the use of education technology in collaboration with the the respective institutions, and I add one more thing to it, and also in collaboration with the regulators, which is UGC in our case yeah. or AICT in our case. I mean, we need to take them also into advantage mm -hmm. because if they don't uh, allow us doing something, I mean, we can't do it. We can't change the examination packet system by our, by 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 ourselves. So. what we did was that when we launched uh, our product in india some four years back we understood how ugc is mandating digital or technological education both online or partially online or semi online they came out on 5th september 2020 they came out with a regulation which listed 27 different parameters an institution should ensure whilst adopting technology either fully or partially what we did was that we were also compliant with almost every parameter but one or two were lacking we ensured that we customize our solution to meet the requirements of ugc and aict we are the only international player which is now 100% compliant with ugc that's also equally important because you can't go against uh, uh, ugc or aict for that matter so it has to be a full <coughs> collaboration between the tech provider and the institution and the regulator so i think that's that's one of the key takeaways Sir, waiting to listen to you. <laughs> We had a conversation also. Yeah, I'm Dr. Anil Sinha, and uh, I don't know whether I'm fitting to this place or not. But I'm a designer, design practitioner, design teacher, and now I'm managing design. Okay. And uh, I started my journey in 1973 from Patna. I'm an analogous person, not a digital person. but we had no option then to adopt to the technology when the covid came i'm the oldest in my institute which is nearing 70 now and the management has given me the full freedom to select my team i made it a point that i'll have the team of the people who are half of my age so i don't have any problem in terms of adopting to the technology what they did during the corona first thing is sir aap ek apple ka ipad le lo to aapko struggle nahi karna padega ki kaise connect hoge and immediately i got connected <coughs> every time whatever i have done i have given some kind of my total understanding total learning and total practice to the students they have one so the philosophy of my institute i started is design is all about connecting and relating design is all about connecting and relating the culture connects technology uh, tradition conform and technology empower so i'm very happy with uh, 
empowering my students, myself, or my faculty with the technology and not to let them become the slave of the technology. That's what the, the problem is coming. Another concept which I gave is the four C's in the education, which was for the students, faculty, and whoever is in the field of education. These four C's are, the first C I see is the character. The character and the discipline is very, very important for the teacher and the students equally well. The second C is the commitment. And the third C is the capability. Why third number the capability is if you are lagging somewhere, maybe somebody will come and put that input in you and you will get the thing. And the last C is the confidence. If you don't have confidence, the first C if you have three C's with you, the last C will automatically come to you. Other thing which I practice in my institute is, I don't give assignment through online. I give assignment in person. Whenever I'm taking class, I call all the students, 250 students in my LP theater with the mic and everything I give lecture. But my co-faculties who are there, they are allowed to record it. Even if I have allowed my students to record my lecture, record my feedback, record the session which I am having. What I am actually getting trouble is that I am a design person, so design happens with the memory. And with the technology, what happens is uh, they look for the solution directly into the, the technological side. They don't go through the memory lane so that they can be their own. I am actually struggling that how to maintain the quality of <coughs> education, the content of education, thinking of their students, all that kind of things are coming in a big way. So what I do is, I first assignment whenever I give, I give them, write a story about yourself and try to visualize it. So they have to get connected with them. If we will not get connected with ourselves, we will not be able to make India as India. And that is why if you are all on your LinkedIn and if you see, I have given the Indian way of thinking. We have a very definite, different way of thinking, which we are missing somewhere. So I'll, also, I'll put here as a, what I practice here in my institute is the team teaching. If the 250 students are there, and one faculty can handle 40 students very easily, beyond that, again, it will be a problem. So I go with the six faculty team, and I give my lecture, I give my assignment, and my faculty team takes it forward. The so team teaching is the one thing which I actually propose, where the, the historical, technical, and the current, and the futuristic, every area is covered, then only we can take the education on a different level, otherwise somewhere we'll miss our content. If the content is missed, then nothing can actually fulfill that. That's where my submission is. Thank, Thank you so much, and I think you're right. Content, I think we have to be very, very careful. Uh, today, too much of content is available, thanks to ChatGPT. And content from all across the globe is available, but when we talk about our indigenous own content, I think we lack. And I'm very happy that uh, the Modi government has initiated a concept of uh, IKS, but I'm sure you must be aware, called Indian you Knowledge System. To Modi, uh, <laughs> so, uh, IKS is Indian Knowledge System, which uh, which is under the AGs of AICT. What they're doing is that they're trying to build the, the Indian way of imparting knowledge uh, in all the aspects, whether it is technology, medicine, science, arts, history, whatever way, that picking up the ways when Indian knowledge was imparted to students in Gurukuls. And they're trying to digitize it and make it available as part of the compulsory uh, online education <coughs> most of the universities. So I think this will be seen from the next academic session. But this is this is what exactly we were talking about, creating our own content. Indigenous content and be made available to the entire world. You can see that some of the Indianization of emoji I have faced. Oh, wonderful, sir. <laughs> great, fantastic. That's sir, that's very good. So, I will not speak now because uh, many Jee. of them are still pending, but I would like later on to share my experience Jee. about you know uh, using mobiles in the class. He raised a very good point. I have an interesting story to share. Yeah, we'll come back to you, sir. Sir. Yeah, hi, everyone and all. Good afternoon. This is Professor Dr. Nilesh Modi. I am a director at School of Computer Science 
Additionally, I am looking after uh, IQAC, Internal Quality Assurance Cells. I am also uh, head of uh, Center for Online Education. We are offering uh, programs in online mode. Also, I am uh, heading the uh, uh, Center for International Studies. Basically, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Open University is the only state open university in Gujarat uh, established by government of Gujarat. And uh, we are a double grade university, category one university, and we are offering programs in online mode. Our main thrust area is inclusive learning, inclusive teaching. Basically, uh, along with uh, the conventional learners, we have various varieties of learners. So our main problem is reaching out to the unrich. So that is our main problem. So we are offering learning to the special students. Along with conventional students, we are offering learning to the uh, special students. We are offering learning to the marginalized students. We are offering learning to the jail inmates. We have our study centers in different district jails of Gujarat. And we are offering learning to the uh, transgenders community. So we are offering uh, pro our programs in open and distance learning mode, online mode, as well as blended learning mode. So to offer all this learning, we have various technology enabled platforms that we have indigenously developed. And uh, uh, we are offering all those things to all the kind of students, all the students. So we have our own indigenously developed Omkari platform, that is a MOOC platform, just like Swayam. And that we have established and that we have developed in 2017. We have Omkar platform that is just like a Kindle, okay, where we are using Kindle platform, okay. So it is same like a Kindle, Kindle platform. We are offering learning through web radio, that is called Swadhyay radio. We are offering learning through web TV, that is called Swadhyay TV. We are offering learning through community radio. Uh, we have our own community radio, that is Hello Bow, and uh, that uh, runs on a frequency of 90.0 FM. We are offering learning through uh, educational channel that is uh, one day Gujarat educational channel and that uh, is being uh, delivered through uh, that uh, uh, just like DD platform uh, uh, government of Gujarat has started some channels and we are being assigned channel number 16 for one day Gujarat. So these are the uh, varieties of uh, things we are offering along with it we are offering some sort of uh, query resolution mechanism through chatbot. We are offering some programs through Swayam uh, that is being established by government of India. We are offering programs through Swayam Prabha and various social media platforms. So uh, we have the platter ready, but the students are not aware about all these things. The university, the government is providing <coughs> all kinds of solutions. In fact, uh, we have started offering various programs for the professional learners, for the industry experts like uh, MSc in data science, MSc in cyber security, MCA. Okay, so industry is getting all these things. So for these professional programs, uh, those who are working in the st in the industry, they are accepting our programs and they are uh, doing uh, their professional studies uh, in ODL and online mode, but. Our main concern is reaching to the unreached. So how exactly we should reach to the last mile people? Recently we got to know about the Abrasa and Nalia where they are not having their own college or school. So we have tried to reach there through technology but the infrastructure is not available there. So with the establishment of various uh, internet service, service provider during the last 3-4 years, we tried to reach them but still some of the areas are Till unreached. So that is our main technical problem that we are facing as an open and distance learning university. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I think this is uh, one of the challenges which most of the universities are facing. How do you reach those unreached in remote areas of the country? I think, though I find that most of the students, youngsters, are using smartphones and therefore they have accessibility uh, uh, to the internet. But nevertheless, there are certain areas in our country where still uh, that's one of the areas that we are not able to touch yet. So we have even started now, as you rightly said, people are uh, watching reels. So we started creating some reels so that students can learn through reels. So that's a fantastic thing. Yeah. It's called micro learning service. Yeah. So in fact, so we are using social media. Even. We have some clients internationally who are now getting into micro learning. What they do is they create two and a half minutes, maximum two and a half minutes videos. 
or reels. And these reels are sent to all the employees as learning snippets. At least you will find two and a half minutes to, to see that in a day's time and you have that micro learning. And the small one question or two question assessment. Now these small snippets that get registered easily and fast in your mind rather than going to a whole uh, you know, list of topics in a particular training session. That's very much involved. Sir. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Rajan. I'm working as a professor in Gandhinagar University. Yeah. Additionally, I have given the duty as a dean at Gandhinagar <coughs> University. I have total 19 years of teaching experience. Might be I'm the one of the young in this panel. So first of all, I'm thankful to given the opportunity to sit here and to discuss, to share the, my view. Sir, uh, I might be, you might be aware about that Gen Z generation. Nowadays, we have students, you know, undergraduate students and PG, postgraduate students are the Gen Z generations. Gen Z, that means what? Uh, the born, uh, they born in 1970. Students, I mean, the generations are called Gen Z generations. So they might be born with uh, a smartphone. Right? And they use this smartphone, you know, at the level, they sleep at late night and wake up, might be in early morning. Or it means ultimately they have a smartphone that is 24 hours. Earlier the scenario was that, that is before the post-COVID, I mean before the COVID, what happened? Many of the people are not aware about the digitization platforms. Nowadays, everyone knows what is digitization, right? Even though if we purchase the grocery or say, you know, by the uh, green grocer, they are also using the PTM or say, any kind of the digital wallet systems. But the problem is what? We have, as an academicians, we all are not that much tech enables educators. Tech enables educator. it means what? Uh, I would like to agree with uh, Professor Ali Singha, sir. Right? He is he belonging to the design field. Right? Uh, so, every people must be upgrade themselves. You know, that will be a tech enabled people. But the adaptability and access, accessibility ability, that is the main challenges. What I am, why I am telling you, the reason is behind that, uh, I have experience, uh, my elders, uh, guru or teacher, uh, they might be retired person. So I talked with him, uh, discussed with him, but he said, no, I'm not feel comfortable. Just only I want to use, you know, Google, I mean mobile phone and Google, that's fine. So the main gap that is between the empowering the teachers and Gen Z generations, I mean the students, and that is the main gap. So to fulfill this gap, we need a tech enabled technologies. Right? Nowadays, we have many technologies. Even though in AI, AI it, it is itself, that's fine. But inside the AI, there are uh, certain uh, in depth, that is machine learning or deep learning. Apart from that, cloud computing, lots of many things are there going on, even though. Or they might be, today, we are using it, might not be, we are not, not sure in the future, it will be agreed will be used same as it is or not. Definitely the changes are required. So adaptability and accessibility, that is the main challenge from my side. My side in the sense from our side. And in our campus, what we are using? We are using the you know a multimedia uh, kind of the uh, presentations. Nowadays, the teachers have to play the role of not only teachers, but they have to play the role of the instructor or the facilitators. So what we did, we prepare our video lectures video lectures with the uh, help of certain technologies or gaming, right? And after that, we play that video in front of the students. Not virtually, virtually in the sense that physically students' presence are required. And then after, we have kind of the blend of uh, Bloom's taxonomy or say discussions or say assignments will be there, right? So we are doing that things. But again, agree, we should agree, if students' presence, presence in the sense of in virtual era, Students are not ready to learn physically, right? So that is the, uh, with the help of technology, we have to think about that, in what way we will be use the technology and students will be also sit in front of us. Though we have some uh, uh, AR or some advancement of the AR or VR. So that is the one point, point from my side, right? So thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Rajanji. Yeah. Uh, uh, very good afternoon to all the dignitaries present here. <coughs> Myself, Dr. Balaganapati. I am working as a professor and principal in Ashok and Rita Institute of Physiotherapy, which is a constant of Charutar University of Science and Technology. 
I've been working in the university since the inception 2009 as a university and in my institution since uh, almost 15 years I'm completing it in the field of physiotherapy. As far as the uh, technical teaching learning process in the techno technical how it is getting enabled, first of all the education which has started from the ancient times and then till now a lot of transformation has happened starting from writing in the the sand. Even if you go to the beach today, also you just write in the sand and see that the water comes and then takes the name or not. Starting from that, the writing in the wood kind of things, and then transforming in the chalkboards, and then with the OHP sheets, and then powerpoints. So a lot of transformation has happened. It. Uh, though that there is a lot of transformation happening, it is all for the students. Ultimately, the content, whatever. And we are talking on the more of the implementation part of the content, that is the delivery of it. And before that, the curriculum, what we are framing it in the schools or the colleges, the curriculum should ensure that the student should be a good learner. If you see the compare the system in India and other part of it, outside world, that till the fifth or sixth age, they are just childs are allowed to play in the things. Here we start with the after three years, we start them with the just start making them to learn about the A, B, C, D kind of things. So that is the one thing I asked around some six year old baby or eight year old child in uh, US or something like that. They said now she is entering into the KG or something like that. That kind of gap is there. And they emphasize more on the good benefits, healthy habits and all. Which is another part which is missing in our Indian part of it. Ultimately the curriculum what we design should make the people better. things. When, as being, I am also the board of study member, or the chairman, when we are framing the curriculum along back 2009, uh, the people in the said that the curriculum should be a UG curriculum or the PG curriculum. There is nothing like this UG curriculum or the PG curriculum. Ultimately, the student is the stakeholder who has to learn that curriculum. So, in my perspective, it was like that. A student of UG, he may not have money to go for the PG. But just because he doesn't have money, he can't pursue the master's. So what we'll do? So thinking in that, the curriculum should make sure that he has to be independent of his practice or the have the survival of the life and should be competitive enough in the market with other people. Even if you take a PhD holder also, even if you take the bachelor, a person who is very good skilled and having a good passion and an attitude is much better than the PhD holder. And he is competitive enough to the market. So that kind of students we have to create that part. So for that the curriculum, as everybody else, almost the leaders and then decision making policy makers are here. So ensure that or you can think in that aspect also that curriculum should make the children in a better prospect to the market. That is the one point. And second is that, uh, as Sir has said that the technology has come. Though we are in the more of a 60s, 70s, I am the one the youngest than Sir also. <laughs> the open mind, the mind we want to achieve to the thing, the open mind has to be there to adapt to the system. I really thankful to you sir but when the system has changed, he has adapted to his thing and then he has made the people to train not also. Not all the people are kind of a thing to adapt to the system. All right? So that is another thing which is we should have an open mind to ensure that the curriculum can reach to the students in the better way. Okay. And of course the teaching centric has changed from teacher centric to the student centric. Recently uh, one of the people have said that you have to give what the students wanted. All right. So based on that now everything, the student doesn't come also to the school, you don't score them. If you score them you will be put in the jail or the case. All right. If you beat them you are on a case. Even if you score, the student goes for the depression. Now, the thing is that most stressful like people are nowadays. So the student said, they come. so what are the, the students come and say that, sir, uh, tomorrow you're going to give leave for my college. They're coming and telling us. We asked why. Because the Ram, uh, Ram temple is going to be open. So they are declared already in most of the schools. So what about the college? The student is coming and getting the instruction or telling us that. what, And they are reinforcing that or telling us that what we should do it also. So that kind of things has come nowadays. So we have to be very careful till we can achieve to go to the student-centric level but we are here to give them the better education. Too. So that is the thing. 
And another important thing, like everybody today morning also it was talked that uh, the students requiring more of the everybody focus more on the marks. Nobody's mark. The teacher is focus more on the completion of the syllabus. Principal is uh, ensure that the teacher has to complete the syllabus, and then the paper setter has to go cover all the syllabuses. At last, the student has to go for the marks. But I strongly disbelieve that a student who has scored higher marks cannot have the good skills, or might have, but lesser than the what the person who is having a minimum number of percentage, or even the 50 percent, the 50 percent of marks who has got it have a better skill. He goes to the higher level compared to the people who has got the gold medal or something like that. That is, I am not saying through the words, through my experience, I am just saying that. Because a student who was one of my students in a physiotherapy college, who was striving to complete his course, and after the course we just give them the guidance, now he is looking after a hundred clients per month and having his own fitness studio in Gujarat. And he is doing much better than what is to be done. So it is like <coughs> transformation is needed. But the transformation like systems, a lot of systems have come and COVID has taught us so much new things. So for example, like in the, during the COVID system, after the classes were finished, that we have to conduct the examinations. So in our university, we were the first universities to conduct the examination system in the online. What we did is that we gave the, uh, the questions paper was uh, given to them before the half an hour kind of things. They just take it and they have to write it down. They have to scan the paper in the PDF format and then combine and they have to send it within the particular time, 15 minutes or something like that. So still the students have adapted and we declare the results also within a 15 days of time or uh, after the COVID, the, the first, first COVID time. The beauty of that is that to take the Viva, we have used the WhatsApp calls for the things. Because sometimes the network issues are there, sometimes these things are there. So you have to use that part also. So it's not only the Viva part because we have to play some videos also there through the system. So like that, the various systems have come, the Zoom or the other things. So everybody has been instructed to adapt to those things. Like we have also got the Google Classrooms are there, Microsoft Teams are there, Zoom, or even WhatsApp has been used. So a lot of systems have been developed and then it has been utilized for those things. Yeah. So technology is there for everybody has to adapt it or upgrade it with the things. But use of AI as we are discussing it out, it has got both advantages as well as disadvantages. Recently I just give as a week, 10, 10 days before I got a, one of the article for the journal review. Before that also I got the article, but there is no statement, discriminatory said it is not written like that. But this time it was written, kindly use, do not use chat GPT for analyzing this paper. Because now that the technology is developed for some other purpose, but now things are getting used for the different things also. Now somebody writes a letter to me, I can able to understand that the letter is the own words or the chat GPT. So that kind of system also it is there, but it is good that the technology is developed and the adaptation is there and we have to ensure that which is good and which is not to be used. So once we are clear with the things, then obviously this level is going to be the next level. And I just want to uh, end by one thing, what, uh, as a teachers, now the role has become more of facilitators, not that uh, the things. So and it always said that uh, rather than giving them the content or own, make them to experience that content to apply that part of it. So once they apply it, it can go for the better things. There's one person said like, instead of giving a fish for the person to eat who is hungry, give them a rod so that he can catch the fish or <coughs> lifetime he can be serving his life. That is what the role of the teachers has to be there, to make them get facilitated and then the students can get better and better. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Bala, I think. Uh, thanks for your inputs and you know, rightly said. Uh, things are changing, a lot of them are changing, and we also need to adapt to those changes. Absolutely right. Thank you so much. Dr. Patel. Namaskar. <coughs> so, we are here on roundtable discussion on a topic of transforming teaching, learning. Rather, 
in with the new technology in short digitalization of our education where some of the topics sub topic are also mentioned pedagogy international internationalization personal experience personalized experience and data driven i dr amin patel uh, presently the advisor of silver oak uh, university for since few months prior to that i was uh, with parul university as vice chancellor and advisor prior to that i was uh, with the gujarat university as vice chancellor prior to that i was principal ld and vice chancellor of gujarat technological university with member secretary of admission committee government of gujarat so what i did in this area of uh, teaching that i will little bit tell that when i became the uh, member secretary admission committee i made the admission of professional course <coughs> totally online and then something i was also interested to see the online admission of medical and paramedical when i was vice chancellor of gujarat university i insisted uh, uh, at kalin the so called our secretary uh, jp gupta sir and we have also made that uh, admission online for medical and all this is some of the thing i did during my that and while became the gq vice chancellor i also added the online assessment which was a new thing at that time i am talking 15 20 years back i am engineer i had learned engineering but at that time there was no calculator no computer but nowadays how to use computer that we have learned lot and as of our gujarat university my contribution is concerned very old university 1948 whatever the documents since 1948 all documents i put it on the web so that it became easy for anyone to ask the old uh, rather information through the university otherwise over the time consuming may take some of the month and so in morning we are hearing mr mehta uh, who was project director of uh, school uh, education department and they have showed a very good picture that lot of things they have already adopted and so far he uh, told about the budget 55000 crore which is the almost budget of remaining 12 department of the government somehow there is a lot of criticism in morning also we have seen that he shown that there is dropout ratio is 2 and 1 percent again that is officer mr sitaria said that uh, maximum median pay rate in gujarat that is 30 percent no doubt he was talking of india but he said that the uh, drop uh, dropout ratio is not uh, this is not correct it is about 30 percent and so so my point here to say that whatever the good thing we should appreciate when we should not criticize i was asked yesterday day before yesterday in the gujarat tv where there is a discussion on why the teachers are not appointed by the government then i was given the answer that it is not only the duty of government to do that thing budget is there but there are some technical hinges by which government or officers are unable to get it done and then he said that uh, anchor said that uh, what is the solution then i said that if we can generate thousands of crore rupees for a great temple why we should not create a fund in that village is from where we are coming and we have grown to that level to that school so that we can provide the teacher to them which will not cost more than what we have given fund to the uh, building the temple and so on now as of all i was in the parul university and in the first cycle parul university got a plus plus and in which whatever we are discussing over here everything i don't say that sky is the limit but there are a lot of thing which is already prevailing there two witnesses are there they are the part of that where the hybrid teaching almost half of the classes are coming and half they are learning from the home uh, there are all classroom with interactive panel of 5 10 lakhs in each classroom and there is a charging point in each classroom so whatever required now a day that parul university has already adopted and i am happy that in my time you be about the a plus plus but now i am retired person But not tired. So I said that he's of seventy. I am of seventy. <laughs> and at Silver Oak University, we are we have adopted uh, little different things. That is PBL, project based learning, and as of our OCT, on job training. Normally, our Shantanu sir used to say that, on while uh, you learn. So our students are coming morning in the college for two three hours, and afternoon they are going to industry afternoon. So like that way, we are promoting. the student so that they can earn they can learn at the same time they can place also like that a lot of things can be done if we are keeping our eyes open otherwise we are always criticizing the system is bad then we cannot do anything lot of initiative i was able to do in my tenure up to the action student startup innovation policy which is prepared by me accepted by the government of gujarat now it is replicated to entire country and today i have said that i will be the delegate of this uh, 
not as a speaker, but they insisted that, sir, you have to speak something, and that's why I'm speaking a little bit to thee. Now, regarding the examination, one is control of examination, someone said that online exam is now became very common. But my still one thing which I could not do in my tenure, that is online on demand exam. Why we are compelling the student to appear on a particular slot? Why, just like our TOEFL and GRE, he can appear at any point of time. It is possible in digital area. I think we think on that, then and then we care. Otherwise, what will happen? We are taking proud as a teacher that so many students have failed. It is not a failure of students, it is a failure of teachers. And the new concept in LEB where we are saying that multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, that is what? In old time, we see that the Rusi Kumar going to the Rusi for learning, what they are doing, what they are interested or interested in particular area, that is given to them. Bhimne Gadyasi Khoda Mane Arjun Ne Tirkam to Banne Gold Medalist, Action Peru to Banne Napasta. That is what we are doing today. We are testing the student what they are not knowing. I think there are a lot of things to be done in the education. I could have done that, but still I am not tired, so I am associated with the university and spending my good time for that and my one slogan always be there as uh, everybody has said the change is the permanent and I also always say that change is an eternal process everybody has to cultivate their mind so they can do the best from themselves. Thank you. Thank you sir. sir so insightful uh, learning. You talked about on the job training sir. So uh, many universities, uh, in the private universities have started uh, apprenticeship or lecture. In association with industry, so what they do is they create a classroom within the uh, uh, institution and they give their content from their company. And students who perform well are adopted and uh, you know employed immediately thereafter. So all these, these concepts are, I think, that, uh, what we just mentioned are going on. In terms of assessment, uh, you, you mentioned innovative ways of assessment. So I used to be uh, the managing director of uh, one of the uh, online universities in Singapore. What they did was they, they changed the system of uh, assignments and examinations and they moved on to something called OBOW, which is Open Book, Open Web Examination. What they used to do was that they used to give a practical situation, a live project, live uh, example, and students were given 24 hours to solve that case study. The moment you download your question paper, your 24 hours will come and then you are allowed to cheat in the sense that you could discuss that uh, case study with any number of people you know. Teachers, professors, colleagues have access to internet, search, do the, the research, and then uh, come at the conclusion. I mean, that's one of the most toughest ways of examination I've ever seen. It is very easy to memorize and uh, reproduce that in the examination. But this is, uh, these are innovations that are coming up in the new age era. Thank you so much for contribution, sir. Dr. Dan. Good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Dr. Prafal Kumar Udani. 30 years I was in ISRO. 2013 I took voluntary retirement. I had inclination for education. And since last 10 years I am in education. I had one term as a vice president in Rajasthan. Then I was in CBA. Today I am the president of Sakharjan Patel University as a vice president. Our university is strong in health science. But anyway, I will not tell the story of university. What is required is a, what is required from the institution, from university? and what you are supposed to do here. Multidisciplinary education is talked about in our uh, education policy. Definitely you require a platform, you require a content, you require assessment mechanism. And now new dimension added is the assessment also will be, impact also will be part of the game. Now suppose I have to implement multidisciplinary education in my own institute. Fortunately we have management department, so if I have to teach four component of management to a engineering student. Faculties are not available. They are occupied, they are occupied. So is it possible that I will be provided a content also which can be curated as per my requirement? Let me tell you a story of my own old days. <coughs> 30 years back I started my own coaching industry. <coughs> so my team was busy in giving content. If you ask them to prepare a lectures, not an everything, it will be time consuming. Even those days, 30 years back, if I give a request to a publication agency in Meru or publication agency in Chandigarh, they will customize the content for me and it will be stamped with my brand. My, my brand. Okay. Today I can consume personal content, but it is not my brand. 
I want my grant to be promoted, my professors to be promoted in any higher education institution, whether you are teaching a mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, professor will come and go. But as a university, your brand, your content should be standard. So what we want from platform provider, from content provider, for assessment agencies, and definitely whatever guidelines provided by ACT, UGC, we cannot differ from there. So very first thing required would be, if I consume a online content which is delivered by a foreign professor, branded by, I am not promoting my own brand. I want a content, I will be able to curate as per my requirement, and I should be having a possibility of revenue generation. Okay. In today's world, being a private university, funding would be dried up for us. You will be not getting funding from anywhere. And spending and increase. If we take your platform, content from Coursera, assessment from third party, ERP from another party, so our expenditure is increasing. But when the revenue stream increasing, so my perception, I am hard, my belief is very strong. Unless and until I create a digital content, I cannot have a additional revenue stream. So going to the platform, the fundamental aspect at university is creating another revenue stream using digital content. The way out is right now we are not accredited, we are going for accreditation, definitely we get a grade or a plus grade in the platform also. But regulations can be always possible to be twisted in our favor. Today I am not accredited. UGC will not permit, AICT will not permit to conduct online education, but as a coaching industry, nobody can deny. Okay. And finally, UGC has given very clear mandate, AICT has given very clear mandate. Minimum 18 to 20 credit minor degree you should be planning. Multidisciplinary education is fine, as I said. I have a firm belief. Higher education is not for multidisciplinary education. Higher education is for specific education only. If mechanical engineer is not fit for designing a machine, then only he has to learn certain kind of a marketing trick. Otherwise, higher education by nature is disciplinary education only. So suppose I have to offer a certain kind of analytic tool for my medical graduating student or PG or UC. We have a 750 bed hospital, full-fledged medical college. And they are looking with naked eye, X-ray or CT scan or MRI. And their judgment can go wrong also. So if we have our own content, tools available from third party and if they are improving diagnosis, definitely we go for it. So few take away for content provider, for platform, for assessment provider, ERP, everybody. Minimum package should be 80 to 20 credit. So offering a one additional course has no meaning. It will not lead to any kind of specialization. Employability for an engineering graduate, what was projected last year in a skill report of 2023, uh, <coughs> engineering graduate has an employability of 50%. Management graduate also has an employability of 50%. If I had four courses of management from semester three onward, by the time he finishes semester six, he has specialization in management, either product management, marketing management, financial management, whatever it may be. So multidisciplinary education in my perception is something like this, where I don't the faculty, correct? So I have to use the platform, I have to use the content of the platform, but yes, it should be my own brand, correct? Okay. Now another point would come at the end of the discussion, at what price point you will deliver? I am charging 1 lakh rupees for a now, for engineering program. So one semester would be 50,000. In Indian terms, one semester is almost 25 credits. So one credit is 2,000 rupees. My maths is very clear, finance is very clear. So when I approach Coursera or IBM, they are approaching us, very first question I ask to them, 30 student is my guest size. Can you deliver content for 200 hours to 600 hours at the price point of 2,000 rupees per credit? They will know. If today they are not coming to me, tomorrow they will come. There will be many platforms. So few things are very important for academicians also and for technology providers also. All business has gone to digital platforms. So 
today or tomorrow, university also has to go to digital platform if uh, options are made clear. Faculty also has to go to the digital platform. If a novice YouTuber is earning a lot of money, why professor cannot earn the money? And if professor is earning money on his own, it is better that university should provide the platform. I can have my own channel. Content would be available, analytics would be available. But at least you have to curate for 18 to 20 credit. What would be the cost per semester, per student for a platform charges, content charges, assessment charges, and finally, you also need to go on in your system what impact it is making. Okay, and uh, slightly stringent point, if I were to measure course outcome, is come up here. Teacher is teaching in classroom, there is a midterm examination, there is a quiz, and through all this process, what is the course outcome of a thermodynamics mechanical engineering, or a power generation mechanical engineering, is easy to measure. I am not interested. What is the program outcome? Whether any technology platform has a solution, this is the way you can measure program outcome at the end of one year of doing mechanical engineering, at the end of two years doing mechanical engineering, at the end of three years doing mechanical engineering. So these are the requirement of a academician. So simply if you tell this is my platform, this is my solution, and today when we talk about personalized kind of a learning, we also want a personalized solution, university specific solution from uh, provider. Whether it be your platform or a Coursera platform or an IBM platform or any platform. Very first point should be do mathematics, finance perfectly fine. Average semester fee in Indian system would be 1 lakh rupees or 50,000 rupees. So nobody will be able to spend more than 2,000 rupees per day, which includes everything. When I charge 50,000 rupees per semester, it includes my teaching, my assessment, credit card printing, everything. So it will include charge of a platform, connectivity bandwidth would be from our side, content which is customized for my branding, assessment will be based on analytics. If everything is perfectly fine in the model, mathematics and finance, open heartedly university system is ready to accept. Very fine uh, input, I think. Uh, you're right, uh, content is the key. Uh, and not only that, uh, Customized curated content or white label. White label. That, that's, that's, that has to be really seen as well. And I think we absolutely do what, what you just mentioned, except content. There are a lot of content players, just have uh, elements there. But then, nevertheless, um, there are a lot of content players, and we have done that uh, for many of our clients. My input was very clear. I don't want to play with 10 players. That's right. Simple solution from one player, when he has to be with 50 players. to give me the platform also, white content also, assessment also, and Additional component will be what is the impact that is new component added in the next criteria. Future is criteria, make input is pronoun. Right. Process, output, and impact. If I am not able to measure what is the mechanical engineering program of the university as a whole, what kind of impact we are making in society. So those parameters also somewhere standardized content will be improved. Fantastic. Thanks for your input. I am so valuable. Namaste. I am Dr. Kiyu Trumbat, working as a head of IT department at Bila Vishwakarma Mahavidyali from last 16 years. So I think I should claim I am the youngest one over here. Everybody can claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, young at heart or mind. Yeah. Both. Both. Both, sir. Anyway, so from last one, uh, we are all are discussing the transforming teaching learning to the tech enabled solutions. So I can think uh, to my experience that we have a huge amount of data content and where we are all are starving for the knowledge when we have to represent anything. So data content is the and the content management to the tech enabled solution is the one of the biggest challenge. And that can be addressed to the various advanced concepts like artificial intelligence, is there machine learning, is there deep learning, is that in that I can see that the NLP is that the NLP can help us to provide the virtual tutors and the chatbots that uh, can engage the students for the online teaching learning. 
One another parameter is that uh, data driven insights for the educators as well as the teachers and the students. The personalized assignments can be there. We can also provide the learning analytics dashboard where student can engage themselves. They can learn. The results can be given at a moment, so they can have the more uh, interest over there. And this all together help them to engage continuously on this virtual platform. So this all can be also seen as there are the so many other platforms like blended learning is there, flipped classroom learning is there. Uh, AR VR concepts are mentioned that AR VR but the thing is that everything should be we are preparing a one plate and the same plate should not be served to each and every student there should be a category and a classification if the first level students are there even they are not knowing what is AR VR and directly we are asking them to use that so there should be a customization and content based learning for each and every individual so they can enjoy this teaching learning process and the better outcome can be obtained thank you Excellent, so much, Very good afternoon to all. Myself, Dr. Indesh. I'm a deputy at University. Uh, I'm from physiotherapy background, and I'm working as an academician and administrator since last ten years. And since last seven years, I have experienced my administration from zero to one. I was the key founder member of our university. When we started, there was a zero students and now we have 6,000. So I am very fortunate that I have seen all the department from where to start and how they grow, including IT and academic admissions and everything. And uh, fortunately, I was in the field where I have worked as an academician also. And a uh, uh, few, uh, few years back, I published my three books and two uh, under a pipeline. And that, as I'm a tech savvy guy, I used, I love to use the technology in teaching. Uh, in 2017-18, when Geo was launched, and as Sir was also about to tell their experience, I also allow my students to use the YouTube in the class. In 17-18 and before the COVID, when I used to take the lecture, I used to allow the student to use the YouTube where they can find the anatomy videos or uh, practical videos, and they can learn. Because visualization is the powerful tool where they can learn easily compared to the only by reading or textbooks or something. So by that way, in that also I used to give the assignment. For example, in 2019-20, where we used to assignment like in Diwali vacation, just a school my homework they did. I used to give my students to do the recording of the practicals. They will have to recording or the speech or they will have to make a learning video or something like they are teaching someone. So I have used the technology for learning, teaching everywhere. And based on that, uh, in my experience and my days, I have understood that there are different problems at the different levels, for example, student level, teacher levels, and as a management level also. As Sir has already pointed that cost is the key factor where we need to implement the technology. For example, Apple, Apple has recently launched the uh, AR glasses and everything, but every student cannot afford it. Even we can implement or we can develop the technology, it's not possible that we can impose our student to buy that and we can use that technology. So cost is definitely a factor for student size as well as from the management side also. As Sir has clearly explained that if someone is coming to us with the high cost of technology and everything, every university cannot afford it. So we have to find a solution which can be cheaper as well as it can be adapted by everyone. For faculty size, we have experienced that adaptability is the problem. For example, at our university, we have all the technologies, we have a blended learning program. We are encouraging our faculties to develop the program. Two months back only, we have uh, identified five faculties, they have developed the program. For first five videos, it took a month for them because they were not used to camera, they are used to properly how to speak. But thereafter, once they adapted, the next 15, 20 videos, they have completed in one month. So adaptability is the problem, but we have experience if we keep training our faculties, that problem can be overcome. From management size, one is the cost. The second problem which we have experienced is statutory compliance. As Sir has already said, the UGC, ASAP, there are certain norms which we have to follow. But if we can try something from our side, I am actually also a council member, also physiotherapy council of Gujarat state. So we have experienced if we make certain changes as a statutory compliance level, Definitely and it will be mandatory for all to ch adapt the changes also. So gradually we can start from top to bottom approach also and it will help to adapt the technology by all the institution. Apart from that, uh, as MN Patel sir says and uh, as the Virendra <coughs> says, there is a problem with the examination also. And as sir is also saying the outcome based learning, how to measure that. So fortunately I have got the chance to be associated with the startup 
they are working on ai ai based model and we have patented recently uh, very soon we are going to launch that product also it is under a demo purpose it is going to solve that problems where we are working on that product where uh, ai will generate the patient paper we will have to put all our course outcome learning outcome everything our syllabus and based on that they will generate the question paper student will give, give the answer and directly they can be assessed and that is all ai based and software based so as sir said on demand examination can also be included so that kind of solution will have to search and that can be implemented and that can in long run can create a true digital learning environment for it thank you thank you so much i think very relevant inputs and that's the future of learning actually ma'am Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Sharda Devi, principal of Ahmedabad Institute of Technology. I'm having more than 25 years of academic experience, and still I would love to teach to the students. Being a principal also from the past 10 years, and my speakers before me they spoke about so many things related to technology. So very little is left for us who are speaking last. Um. i want to mention few of the practices that we encourage in my institute one thing is we make it mandatory for our students to take online mooc courses that is relevant to the subject that is currently offered by the university in that particular semester and at the college level we won't take any examination they can complete the mooc course and they will get the grades from there those can be incorporated and i insist my faculty should go through what are the mooc courses that are available online on that particular subject so that they also can register for that along with their students and i found it is very interesting and students are getting the exposure to the professors that are from iits from nits because nowadays nptel courses i would recommend nptel courses being an engineering institute that's one thing and one more thing and i encourage my faculty to create content not like actually video lecture sir but yes all of you mentioned that nowadays because our lecture time is one hour our traditional like yes for the time table and syllabus this many hours are to be assigned to a particular subject but we are facing so much difficulty that for me also it's a huge problem mujhe ye adapt karne mein bhi bahut difficulty hui because earlier i used to take a lecture of 1 hour or 2 hours continuously where the students are very attentive till the last after the complete span of 2 hours now when is the attention span it's only like limited to less than 10 minutes only 6 to 8 minutes after 6 to 8 minutes we have to change the topic make them bring into continuously we can't run the 1 hour topic in the class because after some time the student lost interest and by means of like whatever you suggested before uh, like gaming techniques or something we can make it interesting and the creation of this micro learning that is very important now and creation of original content is also huge problem because when i am asking my faculty to create the content and when we are seeing that that content is mostly they are taking from youtube here and there and they are like talking so that originality is lacking so i think the educator should also be trying or uh, they are enabled with the technology to create the better content so which is interesting for the students and one more thing we spoke so much about the personalized learning and i want to enhance the impact of technology for the collaborative learning as well uh, one of my college students a year back he worked on a project along with the students of nit kurukshetra and one more he worked along with the project with nit patna so this is where like we are talking about with the technology student can access the content by the prepared by the educator from other side not only from their institute but they also can get the opportunity to work with their peers on the contemporary project with the other institutes and in the last i can say that because i won't take much time amalgamation of that technology and pedagogy with the talented educators it may wonders in the field of education we all are expecting for but here the important thing is right technological tools and the talented educators because without the educators 
teaching is not possible. This much wrong to me. Thank you all. Thank you so much, ma'am. Dr. Ravi. Will allow credit transfer as an institute. How can be done? Sir, my internal marks out of 30 that I will give my internal marks. University <coughs> examination is <coughs> Yeah. Yes. University examination. I'm Professor Ravan. I have 28 years experience of law teaching in the Gujarat University and now recently I joined the Gandhi Nagar Institute of Law. Uh, actually, the education is the base of the society and it depends on the primary education which we are lacking. As far as the primary education is concerned, they create the base of the education where it is totally neglected. Now, we as a higher education institute teachers, only we can beautify the person have a knowledge. We cannot change the base or the clay. So the basic thing requires, we have to do the patchwork. And most of the thing, we have a devices, the teaching devices. But how one can learn, how one can adopt, how one can apply, is the question remains with the student. So due to this technology as well as the pattern of this competition and all these things, knowledge is converted into marks. It is not really exhibited. Now most of the school and college and university are giving more numbers. But when we take the interview, most of every with me, they have a gold medal or a first class, but we are the basic question, they have no any answer. So how we can convert the literacy into education? The uh, Ravi Shankar Ravar was told that, that there is a difference between the education and literacy. Literacy have a three concern, read, write and calculate. Where the education have a three concern, Heart, mind and limb. Generally we totally neglect it. So how we can convert the information into knowledge and it is the work can be done by the education. So the devices are there. But how we can use it, we can apply it, it is a million dollar question. Now the technology, particularly in the law, bankers, law field, most of the devices are available on the fingertips. We can see the, what is the going on in the Supreme Court of India, High Court and District in Gujarat. Many district court is connected with these devices. So we can see here and we can also plead the matter from anywhere in this world, in this state of Gujarat. So technology is useful tool. But how we can use is a million dollar question. So the technology is good, it is required, it may be innovative, more and more technology may be there. But how it can convert it into knowledge and application is a question. If it should be computable, affordable, available, and foolproof, then we can change the scenario of the education. <coughs> so any judgment come by Supreme Court immediately it is transfer into 18 languages and pass on to all the states. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the yeah. is already been yeah. there. In there are legal bots. A uh, lot of uh, legal firms in Delhi are using legal bots. Yeah. Legal boards will have uh, judgments not only from India, from every state, yeah, across yeah. the globe. Yeah. What they would do, what a lawyer, a team of lawyers would do, that is done in few, few seconds. Yeah, it is a yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. I am very delighted to be here. My name is Dr. Santanu Chakravarti. I am representing from Parul University professionally. Uh, very grateful to the platform as well as I am very lucky and talking when my Guruji is here, along with my uh, reporting boss, I can say. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Apart from Dr. Santan Chaturvati, I don't need to mention anything. The reason being, you can Google me. You can understand who am I. Otherwise, I can give you my card outside. My request is no more technology, please. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see many more Jamtaras. Whatever is available, please, D2L build better. You talked about wheels. Can anyone tell me three songs most popular just now going on? One is, Hey Prabhu, Ye Kya Ho Rai? This is the platform. Hey Prabhu, Kya Ho Rai? One minute retention power, I bet. That's why I say, I am the profession by choice, not by chance. My each reel is going viral. 60,000 plus plays. Might be because of that, my university awarded me, not once, twice, most student friendly 
academic leader. So, understand the psychology of the student first, not the teachers first. It is student as the takers, not the teachers. <coughs> My point is, how many of you are using Twitter? How many are, of you are having podcast? Please go back home, Google. I have podcast too. I am very active on Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, understand, might be we are dumping technology. We are misusing technology. Let us talk about cyber part also. So with my humble submission, today since this house is already full with the knowledge, let us respect first intelligence, then talk about artificial intelligence. Let us first respect learning, then go to deep learning. Let us first respect learning, then go to machine learning. Meaning, we are focusing on real, not the real. So ladies and gentlemen, since time is not allowing me, I request, is this a life? It is live? No, no sir. Yes, sir. Had it been live, D2L would have got maximum mileage. <laughs> because I have the highest Fan followers, I am giving you some hint. We will, we will definitely use it. <laughs> Thank you. So this is what this is what today I wanted to take. Let us not dump the technology. Let us use the technology. Don't misuse the technology. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Sir. Thank you. How active all professor, teacher are with the social media? It's visible, sir. Uh, it is measured and it is noted and also the warning comes. You are not that protected. <laughs> Sir, you said gamification. I play football still at this age in the playground. Fantastic. So let us not talk about gamification. Let us go to the uh, football ground and play football. I have a football in my car always. <laughs> so I am very grateful. I mean, Patel sir, under under leadership of I mean, Patel sir, learned lots of things. And Dr. Shantanu Chakravarti, who is having a huge industry experience and leading management program as well. So great learning under Parul University with so many new technology initiatives. Thanks so much, sir. And I think make you our partner, Mr. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not the least. <laughs> the last. Anyways, uh, there are always advantages and disadvantages of being last one because you are well noticed. <laughs> that what new you can come with it where everything has been taught, everything has been exposed over here. And especially when uh, you know Virendra Seva played before you, and if you play like uh, Sanjay Madhurekar, then definitely people will be. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I will try to justify my role. The thing is that uh, I am Dr. A.P. Vyas, Amish Vyas. I have more than 30 years of experience. Presently, I am looking after uh, uh, registrar, <coughs> in capacity of registrar at Indra Sil University. I am also professor and head of chemical and biochemical engineering. I am also director IQSC. I was dean at Indra Sil University till last February and I am also a director for startup SSIP over there and also looking after the admission over there. So I think that's enough and uh, let me come back to the point. See I can see, uh, I will go back to the past. It was the time when 20 years was considered a generation gap. And now it is hardly three years. Three years is considered as a generation gap. Thanks to IT. Thanks to all these software and technologies, what we are seeing. The major problem, when I was studying, we were not having computer. We never see. Sir might be agree that at that time there was no computer. And now we are preparing PPT on computer, we are preparing videos on computer. 
So that what many people have said, adaptability. But that is the basic issue with our technology. Whether our technology is reducing the job of the faculty or increases the job of the faculty. We need to understand that part. Because the time which we should <coughs> devote in betterment of the students, understanding their psychology, understanding their problems in classroom, we are devoting more time in making a very rosy, very beautiful PPT and videos. No doubt, it is not you know, a worst thing. It is good, a need of time. Students are also looking for it. But my question is whether that can solve the purpose when student can learn everything from the Google, then what is the role of the teacher? If student can learn everything from the Google, why they are attending the regular universities? There are open learning classes. They can study, they can do the MOOC, they can get the certificate. Global certification is the new trend. EC Council and so many are there from the USA. They are giving global certification with that certification. They can get the job just like NIIT and others, they are also giving. Why teachers are required? Because teachers are meta Googler. <coughs> if everything is available on Google, you can digest, then why teachers are needed? No. And that's why I can say we should compromise and optimize the time devoted or time available with the teacher in teaching, in preparing new things. At the same time, the like uh, ERP software and other things, people are using that. But how many data and how many time we are consuming in filling the ERP data? I have to prepare new assignment. I have to prepare, uh, you know, uh, PPTs. I have to prepare videos. I have to upload on the ERP. Then student will see it. And again, after all these exercise, they will come to me. That's sir, what is the meaning of this thing? And why not to go directly? Why we are, you know, rooting from different different places then when there is a direct time so technology is good only thing is optimum use of technology sensible use of technology judicial use of technology that is required that's what i mean to say second thing is that adoption we are good in adopting few people are still facing issues in this generation also i have seen if you go to the tribal area People are not having email ID when they have to register them on for the pre-ship card for scholarship. They do not have email ID. They don't know how to operate the computer. They are using this Instagram. Sir is saying people are using Instagram, but that is disadvantage to them. The reason is I will take one two more minutes, sir. I know we are running short of the time, but this is very critical issue that this Instagram and other things <coughs> which is good for student at this time for students because they are changing all the rules within a second and that affects their concentration timing. Earlier it was 20 to 25 minutes, now it is hardly 7 minutes. Within 7 minutes they will lose their interest from the content. And it is the responsibility of faculty at that time how to make it interesting. And at that time live interaction is needed, live jobs are needed, live participation is needed in addition to what we are creating content online. This is what I want, I wanted to say. There are so many things, but others have already told. And now we are talking about this new technology only after COVID. This is the post-COVID era, era when everyone trying to encase this technology, ERP and everything. Before COVID, Zoom was there. How many of us were using Zoom? No one. Hardly 2%, 3%. Now we can't talk without Zoom. <coughs> so we need to understand advantages, disadvantages, both. And at the time, how to use the precious time of our faculty, precious time of university in optimum way. So that we can get the best benefit out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed like uh, sweet dish at the end of the meal. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you all the, all the leaders sitting here. I think uh, fantastic views. A lot of learning that happened in this room. And we will definitely preserve it. Uh, 
I have my team. We have small uh, token of appreciation for all of you. Plus some certification from Madhav. Hey, my so you are Mr. Boss, what kind of a financial package you are offering to us? <laughs> this, is, this is the cost of two ice creams per child per month. <laughs> we'll discuss it in details. It was a very interesting session. Thank you so much. And it is a pleasure to be a part of it. Not directly, but indirectly. It was so much fun. So much information. So much experience, to be really honest. Amazing. And that is the reason why I really love my job. And I get to see, to listen to all of you fine educators who are doing so much for the education system. So we here at Edocom Media would like to felicitate you for all the work, for all the dedication you're showing towards our future generation. Thank you so much. And I would like our moderator, Dr. Prem Das, to please come up and do the next one. Yes, please, sir. Please come up. Thank you. Professor Nilesh Kumar Modi. Yes, please, sir. One more. Professor Anil Sana. Yes, please. Mr. Tariq Ali Sayed. Law Department. <laughs> Mr. Virendra Singh Nangoria. Yes. Dr. Vijay Zaveri. Professor Jyoti Shrivastava. Yes, please. One more. Thank you. Professor Praful Kumar Udani. Yes, please. Professor Dr. K. C. Rawal. Yes, please. One more. Thank you. Dr. Rajan Patel. Yes, please. One more. Thank you. Dr. Bindesh Patel. <laughs> yes, please. One more. Thank you. Dr. M. Sharda Yes, please. One more. Okay. Doc, Dr. Shantanu Chakravarti. Yes, please. One more. Thank you. Dr. Amis Bias. Excuse me, sir. Come forward, please. Yes. Yes, please. <coughs> One more. Okay.
Dr. Amit Patel. Yes, please. One more, sir. Yes, one more, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Kayur Brahmbhat. Yes, please. One more. Thank you, sir. Sir, I would really like you to say, uh, last but not the least, Dr. Prem Das Maheshwari. Yes, please.